In 2025, we finally crossed a historic threshold. Multiple humans survived more than six months with pig kidneys functioning inside them. This is not just the United States. China reported the same milestones. Today, I'm going to show you exactly what happened, why six months matter so much, and what still stands in the way. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. I'm going to break down the breakthrough results, the science behind gene editing, and what this means for the 100,000 Americans waiting for a kidney right now. If you're tracking transplant breakthroughs, hit subscribe. I share evidence-based kidney health content every single week. Today, I'm going to show you the U.S. and China results and explain why six months is that critical threshold and reveal what the animal studies predicted. Finally, I'm going to give you my honest assessment of where this technology stands today. Let's break it down. Right now in the United States, there are more than 100,000 people waiting for a kidney. Thousands die every single year because a human organ never becomes available. Dialysis does keep people alive, but it doesn't replace the quality of life or the survival advantage of a transplant. The question the field has been chasing for decades is simple. Can we safely transplant an organ from another species, a pig, into a human and have it last long enough to actually matter? In 2025, we got the strongest evidence yet that the answer might be Yes, and here's why this year was different than all the previous years. Before 2025, no one with a kidney transplant from a pig had survived more than two months. Either the organs failed from rejection or patients had other complications. Six months, what's important about it? You see, six months defines that danger zone in transplantation. If a graft is still working after six months, the odds of it continuing to work go way up. When we saw multiple people cross that threshold in different countries with different surgical teams, the entire field started to take notice. The clearest example is the Massachusetts General Hospital patient. There was a 67-year-old man named Tim Andrews, who had end-stage kidney disease and no good human donor options. In January 2025, he received a gene-edited pig kidney. By July 2025, he had crossed six months off dialysis with the pig kidney still functioning. Now, that set a human record for pig kidney transplant longevity at the time. But here's what made that kidney special. It wasn't a normal farm pig kidney. It had three pig genes knocked out, the features that make the human immune system attack the kidney immediately. And there were seven human genes inserted to improve the compatibility and reduce problems like clotting and inflammation. On top of that, scientists had inactivated 59 retrovirus sequences that were embedded in the pig genome. These are viruses that could theoretically reactivate and harm the recipient. A total of 69 total gene edits, all designed to make this organ as human compatible as possible. Here's the part most people don't know. Transplant teams will tell you the first six months are the highest risk windows. Before Andrews, the record for a living pig kidney transplant was just two months. And this was set by the first MGH patient, Richard Slayman. Crossing six months was a real line in the sand. Now, there's an important update. In October 2025, Andrews' kidney was removed after 271 days due to chronic rejection. But the fact that it functioned for nine months gives researchers critical data on what works and what needs improvement. If you're watching this, I want to know which one of you guys have had your kidney functions tested, but more importantly, which one of you have never had your kidney function tested? All right, now let's talk about China. Almost at the same time, Chinese researchers at Jixing Hospital, they reported a 69-year-old woman living more than six months with a gene-edited pig kidney. She received the transplant on March 6, 2025. 
By November 2025, she has survived more than eight months. And as of the latest reports, the kidney is still functioning. Details are still emerging. Genetics, immunosuppression protocols, and long-term monitoring data haven't all been published in English language journals just yet. But once again, here's why this matters. This is not just one American center doing a moonshot experiment. We have parallel programs in two different countries showing that a pig kidney can support a human for half a year or more. That's important for two reasons. First, it shows that the biology is reproducible across symptoms. Different surgical teams, different immunosuppression protocols, different gene editing companies, and they're all getting similar results. Second is it creates momentum for international standards on safety and monitoring. If this is going to become a therapy, regulators in the US, China, Europe, they're all going to need to agree on what success looks like. Here's what convinced researchers that six months was achievable. In 2024, Chinese scientists, they kept a macaque monkey alive for 184 days, over six months, with a single gene edited pig kidney. They used an advanced immunosuppression regimen specifically designed for xenotransplantation. That experiment told the field, if we control immunity well enough, a pig kidney can provide long-term filtration in a primate. Animal models obviously don't translate perfectly to humans. But when the 2025 human cases in the United States and China passed six months, everyone in xenotransplantation knew this matches the animal signal. We are on the right curve. All of these early patients, Andrews in Boston, the first MGH patient, Richard Slayman, NYU's patient, Lisa Pisano, the University of Alabama at Birmingham's patient, Tawana Looney, the Chinese woman, were done under compassionate use or expanded access. What this means is the patient had basically run out of options and regulators allowed a one-off attempt. What's different now is that formal clinical trials of gene-edited pig kidneys in humans have begun in the United States. Centers like Mass General Hospital, NYU Langone, and companies like eGenesis and United Therapeutics, they're enrolling very small numbers of patients, think three to six initially, with plans to expand to 50 or more if safety in graph survival endpoints are met. These trials, they use kidneys with defined edit sets. For example, three xenoantigen knockouts plus six to seven human transgenes so regulators can actually compare patients across sites. And the primary endpoints they're looking at is graph survival at six months, kidney function markers like creatinine, immune response and infection, especially any evidence of pig born viruses. The thing this is so exciting is that the field is moving from hero surgeries to collect real data. Now, here's a question for all of you. If a pig kidney could get you off dialysis, would you say yes? Let me know your thoughts below in the comments. Now, what's still hard? This is the part that everyone needs to hear. Rejection isn't gone. Even with 69 edits, the human immune system can still recognize and slowly damage the pig kidney. Chronic rejection and antibody-mediated rejection are still real, as is the infection risk. Teams are watching very closely for pig endogenous retroviruses, which are called PERVs, and other pig pathogens. So far, everything is extremely controlled. These pigs are raised in biosecure facilities, but regulators still want multi-year follow-up. And of course, this requires lifelong immunosuppression. These patients are not walking around off medications. Right now, pig kidneys do not eliminate the need for immunosuppression. And of course, there's very limited access. As of late 2025, this is available at only a few U.S. centers and selected Chinese centers, mostly through trials. So yes, it's hopeful, but it's still very early. Here's some takeaways that you want to know. One, multiple humans have now lived more than six months with pig kidneys. 
Number two, this has happened in both the United States and China showing reproducibility. Number three is animal data predicted this was possible and human data confirmed it. Number four is formal clinical trials are now underway in the United States. Number five is if trials show six months is repeatable and some patients hit nine to 12 months, insurers, regulators, and transplant societies will have to start planning how xenotransplantation fits into the standard kidney failure path. Can pig kidney solve the organ shortage tomorrow? No. But for people who have run out of options, older dialysis patients, highly sensitized patients, patients who have no living donors. This is the first real option we've seen in decades. If this video helped you to understand where xenotransplantation actually stands, please hit that like button. It helps more people to discover this content. Be sure to subscribe for weekly kidney research updates. I post them every week and usually twice a week based on your feedback. And of course, share this with anyone who's waiting for a kidney transplant. This information can absolutely change how they talk about and think about their options. And finally, always remember, practice greatness and gratitude to others and to yourself by staying informed about your health. I want to thank you guys for watching so much, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video. Take care.